Okay, lesson 57, page 220. So Paul was arrested in Jerusalem. Well, spent a couple years there under, under arrest, uh, waiting for trial. Finally, because he didn't think he could get a fair trial, he appeals to Caesar. And now he's going to travel to Rome. And we hear about that tr trip to Rome in Acts chapter 27, the first part of 28. And we're going to see uh, was not a good trip for Paul. What can we infer from chapter from verse 1 there of chapter 7, 27? Who was traveling with Paul? Other prisoners. There were other prisoners. And Julius. There was a centurion and Luke as well. Remember, Luke is the author, the one writing the book of Acts, and he talks about we. So no doubt he's along with them as, as well. And the journey actually doesn't even start off very well. Uh, verses 7 and 8 there of chapter 27 describe the early stages of the journey across the Mediterranean Sea. How did that go? Um, there's... Yeah, already they're dealing with rough seas, uh, unfavorable winds. And again, remember, uh, these aren't great big battleships with nuclear engines. Um, these are sailboats. Um, and so if the wind's from the wrong direction and you have rough seas from the wrong direction, you kind of have to go crossways and it takes you a lot longer and it's a lot harder. And so this was already from the very beginning a difficult journey going to get worse. Uh, because they'd been delayed, they were getting into the winter months, which can be very stormy on the, the Mediterranean. And what prophetic warning did Paul give those in charge of their journey? Verse 10. Emma, would you read verse 10? Chapter 27. Man, I can see that our voyage is to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo, but, and to our own lives also. So Paul warns, doesn't he? If we keep on this journey, there's going to be some, some problems. We're going to suffer a great loss. He's really warning them that because of the, the conditions and the time of year, that we should probably wait. Uh, stop in port for a while and wait for conditions to improve, but they don't listen. They're going to continue on. And so instead of listening to Paul, the centurion in charge, he opts to set sail again. Uh, they hope to make a, a small jaunt to a better port called Phoenix on the island of Crete. Um, you see the island there of Crete, kind of out in the middle of the Mediterranean ocean, and now they want to sail to Phoenix, but what prevents them from getting there? Storm. Big storm comes up. I suppose we heard of nor'easters, northeasters. They're big, really, I suppose, almost hurricanes that come up along the eastern coast of the United States and cause all kinds of of uh, damage even at times. Um, uh, this would be that type of, of storm. Uh, this was you know, something along the lines of a, of a hurricane. And so you notice, even from Crete, they landed at one spot, but just to make it to the other part of the island, they get blown off course and can't even make it that, that far and end up out in the middle of the Mediterranean. And 
what did the sailors do to try and keep the ship from being destroyed in the storm then? They lower the anchor, they're securing the life boat, they're throwing cargo overboard so that they don't have as much weight on it. Um, you get a bunch of weight, has been, it can make the boat less stable. And so they're doing everything they can to try and keep that, that boat from being destroyed in this storm. Things were getting so bad, continued on for days, that how did everyone feel? Scared. And they gave up. They really kind of gave up, huh? Hopeless, we might say. Uh, this is, gave up all hope of being saved. They figured they were gone. They figured it was, they were going to end up at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea uh, because of this, this storm. But then what promise does God make through Paul to the rest of the people on the ship? Verse 22. Katie, read that verse, please. Mm -hmm. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. So what did God reveal to Paul was going to happen? The ship's going to be destroyed, but what's going to happen to all the people who are on board? They're all going to survive. So everyone's going to live. Ship is going to be lost, but no loss of life. Um, so that would be quite encouraging, wouldn't it? You're out here in the middle of the ocean and the storm is so bad, and you think we're all going to drown. The ship's going to be wrecked, and we're going to die. And now to hear that God says no one's going to die. The wind pushes them, they get stuck on a sandbar, and what begins to happen to the ship then? Yeah, it uh, starts to be torn to pieces. Yeah, that's one of the things, that, you know, a boat's meant to float, and even if the wind and waves are tossing it around, that boat will float and bounce around. But now if it gets into shallow ground and it gets stuck there, now you've got the winds banging against it. Uh, think of when you get big waves, how those big waves can knock over rocks and things of that nature. Well, if those big waves are now pounding against a boat who's stuck on those rocks, it's just a matter of time before that, that boat, no matter how big and strong it might be, is going to be, be wrecked and destroyed. And so that's what's happening. Now they're stuck on the sandbar. The waves start to tear it apart. How did the centurion step in to rescue Paul and his companions? What were the soldiers planning to do? Kill them, huh? We can't keep them safe. We're going to be the boat's going to be lost. We got to save our lives. We don't want our prisoners getting away, so we'll kill those prisoners. But the centurion steps in. He he keeps them from from killing them. And now how do they get to the island of Malta? Those who would swim got out and swam. Those, some of them maybe grabbed boards or whatever they could to float on. So that they could make it to land. You know, they probably didn't have a bunch of life jackets on board like like we would in a ship today um, but whatever they could float with they floated there and notice in the map there you have on, on page 220 Malta's a little island off kind of in the middle there south of, of the big island of Sicily but notice where they were trying to go they're trying to go to Phoenix they get swept out to sea 
and there's really not much of anything else out there other than this little tiny island of of Malta and by God's direction they end up on that island and, and all of them are are saved even though the boat is destroyed what did the residents of Malta do for the people from Paul's ship they built them fire and them. yeah they welcomed them they took care of them saw these people in need after being shipwrecked and did what they could to help what happens to Paul now is he's gathering wood for the fire 28 verse 3 what happens to him? a snake bites him so he's bit by a, a poisonous snake And what did the people there in Malta think that this was a sign? What did they think it meant? Verse 4. They thought he must have done something really bad, huh? He's getting what he deserves. Uh, he escaped from the sea, but he can't escape too long now. He got bit and he's going to die. So... He's going to get what he deserves one way or another, they thought. So he must be somebody pretty bad that here after just escaping shipwreck, he's going to die from a snake bite. But how did God show that he was with Paul through all of this? Yeah, in fact, verse 5 tells us he wasn't hurt at all by the snake. Huh? Suffered no ill effects. And in fact, God also, something else to show that he was with Paul during this time. Verses 8 and 9. What did he do for the people there on the island? What did he do, Emma? Verses 8 and 9 of chapter 25, or 28 rather. What happened to him? What was Paul able to do? Heal. Uh, What's that? Guy. Heal what? Heal a guy. Yeah, he healed. In fact, once he healed this this one man, they brought a bunch of sick people to him. So God allowed him to heal that. Again, showing God showing the people that Paul, that he was with Paul, that Paul's message was from God. And it was, we see that with the disciples early on. Um, and it was important because they didn't have, have a Bible like we have. They didn't have that recorded. Um, and so to show that these men were from God, God often allowed them to do these special things. We don't have that same need for miracles because we have something those people didn't. We have the Bible. Although it isn't explicitly stated, what might we assume Paul also did while he was there? What do you suppose he shared with the people as well? Jesus. Jesus. No doubt talked to them about God's word and, and preached and taught. Then the last part of the book of Acts, we hear about Paul in Rome. Long journey, all the problems of bad weather and shipwreck. Paul does eventually make it to, to Rome. They spent three months on the island of Malta.
it was after the worst of the winter weather had passed and they're able to travel again. Now they they head on to, to Rome. And when Paul and his companions arrive at Puttoli in Italy, what happy discovery did they make? Verse 14. Katie, read that verse, please. There we found some brothers who invited us to spend a week with them, and so we came to Rome. So who was there? What was it talking about? Who greeted them? People. What kind of people? Brothers. What does it mean by brothers there? Believers. Believers. So there, there were other Christians there. Why is it like that? Like what? There's like a space in between. So there were fellow Christians who invited them to stay for their time, I suppose, to take care of them while they traveled through. So the message about Jesus had been spread to Italy already by this point, even though Paul hadn't gone there. Others had spread the message, huh? Right. Right. Between the question and the oh, answer. Oh, that's what you meant. I thought you meant like there were like two spaces between words. <laughs> Still didn't get it. Then. What did the other Christians in the area do when they heard that Paul was there? Um, I suppose you hear that Paul is here. Um, Paul would have been known already because of his missionary journeys in Asia Minor and, and Greece. And no doubt some of those people that had brought the message to Italy, were had traveled from those areas. And so, what do you suppose? Do you think people wanted to see and listen to Paul teach and preach? Yeah. So many of the other Christians in the area, when they heard Paul was there, they traveled to, to see him so that they could hear him as well. What were Paul's living arrangements like in Rome while he is really, I suppose, under arrest, waiting for his trial before Caesar? Verse 16. Emma, read that verse, please. Well, when we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. Yeah, so Paul gets to Rome. He doesn't have to be put into jail. Uh, he's able to well, maybe rent a house or apartment of some kind, and there's Roman guards there watching him. Um, but I'd say he's under house arrest. Huh? And so he's got some freedoms. I suppose maybe today with our technology, it might be somebody who's got the ankle bracelet on them that monitors where they go they can they don't have to be in jail they can even go to their their home but if they go outside of a certain area you know that, that alarm's going to go off and the police are going to come and take them into custody then they'd have to go to jail uh, was here paul's able to, to have some freedom and kind of be on his own but there's roman guards there watching over him yet uh, with whom did Paul meet shortly after arriving in, in Rome then? Beginning of verse 17. The leaders of yeah, the leaders of the Jewish people who were living there in, in, in Rome. Notice, what did they want to do? They wanted to hear Paul preach. They wanted to hear what Paul had to say. I mean, Christianity is, is growing. Many people are being brought to faith. Uh, they've been hearing all about this. And so they want to know from, from Paul uh, what, what is going on. Huh? They want to want to hear more about Christianity from him. And I suppose this has happened many other times, what resulted from Paul's meeting with the Jewish leaders. Some of them believed. believed. Some did not. Um, 
was here we don't have on the part of the Jews quite the same anger and animosity and hatred towards Paul and trying to, to stir up uh, problems um, but I suppose in, in regard to the population there they would have been a smaller group probably there in Rome and didn't have as great an influence on the whole city as they did in some of those other areas where they caused problems for Paul. According to verse 30, how long was Paul under house arrest in Rome? Two whole years. Two years. So anyway, since Paul got to Jerusalem and got arrested because of, of the riot that started there, it's now been about five years, huh? You figure it was more than two years that he was in jail there in, in Caesarea, and then you have three months on Malta plus the rest of the travel time. You have a, uh, and, and now two more years, uh, five years of Paul's life that he's really under arrest here. Um, and during this time, what did Paul do? He preached about Jesus. So he used this opportunity to, and he had some freedom. He could welcome people. Uh, he could meet with them. There would have been Roman guards um, that he would have had opportunity to speak with. And he taught about Jesus. Paul faced difficult times ahead. The uh, Bible doesn't give us all the details. Um, from what we read in the Bible, though, it does appear that after his appeal to Caesar, he was released and he was able to do some more traveling to to preach and teach as he had on his first three missionary journeys. Um, but that probably didn't last long. Um, guess is maybe around eight years. So he spent five years really under arrest in Caesarea and traveling to Rome. And then in Rome, then he's released. He maybe has another eight years where he can travel around. Um, once again, he's arrested for his work. Um, but this time it's not by jealous Jewish people, but by the Romans themselves. Um, as time went on, the Romans started to persecute the Christians very severely. And you maybe heard of, of things in history where the, the Christians were sent out into the Roman Colosseum to do battle with lions, um, thrown to the lions and killed, um, or where you know, they went out and were slaughtered by the gladiators. Um, that sort of thing is starting starting to take place here uh, as we get towards the towards the end of Paul's life and so Paul uh, was arrested then by the Romans and um, we're going to turn to 2 Timothy 4 verses 6 to 8 and here are some of the final words we have written by the Apostle Paul um, and Timothy had traveled with Paul at times on his missionary journey. Um, but what does he say? 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 8. Oh, got it there? 2 Timothy. I have Emma? 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 8. Katie, read please. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. So what does Paul say is going to happen to him soon? What does he die? Yeah, he recognizes that he's going to be put to death. Um, his work here on earth is coming to an end. But the Lord had kept him in the faith. And even though Paul was sure he would die, what was his confidence? He would go to heaven. He would go to heaven.
So as we look at the, the, the ministry of the Apostle Paul and, and his life after his conversion, you see one thing, God blessed the preaching of his word so that many more were brought to, to faith. Uh, also reminded of the fact that the sinful world will continue to oppose that message and at times even very violently and want to destroy those who, who follow Jesus. And that's going to be the case for, for Paul. But even if that happens, we can be certain of that home in heaven that Jesus has prepared for us and the glory that we, we will know there with him. So how was God faithful to his promises to Paul even during a difficult journey to Rome? He arrived there, didn't he? He survived, he made it to Rome just as Jesus promised. And there in Rome, what was he able to do? Even though he was still under house arrest and didn't have all his freedom, what was he able to do? Preach the gospel, share God's word, talk about Jesus. And even if it meant death, Paul wouldn't stop preaching and teaching the gospel. Why? Because he wanted others to be saved. And is there any other way to heaven other than through Jesus? No. That's the only way. And Paul knew that. And so Paul was willing to suffer even death for the sake of the gospel. And God continued to work through that preaching and to bring others to faith. Okay, let's close with a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, keep us faithful to you, even in the face of persecution. Make us bold witnesses that we might share the message of forgiveness and salvation through your work, through your death and resurrection, so that many more might come to know you as their Savior and join us one day in the glories of heaven. We ask this according to your will, 